Hey, aloha, and welcome to Stan Energy Man on Think Tech Hawaii. And uh, it's pretty crazy weather here. All you climate changers revel in the uh, fact that we've got the squirreliest weather around. We're practically dressing up in parkas over here in Honolulu. And it's been windy and rainy and ugly, just ugly. Anyway, today's show is a little bit different. Um, from time to time, I like to do news from around the world in hydrogen. And uh, so this week, I, I happened to get my... Uh, California Fuel Cells Partnership newsletter from Keith Malone, and uh, he was on the show a couple weeks ago. And um, he puts out a great newsletter, and I started going through the articles and figuring how I could read the excerpts from just just the excerpts from some of the of the uh, articles. And it went on for three times the length of my show, so I edited it way back. And I'm going to go through some of the things that are happening in the hydrogen world because. Quite frankly, I just don't think most people realize that hydrogen is a real thing. Uh, it's becoming a, a real player in our energy uh, technologies today, especially uh, for transportation. But pretty soon it's gonna become a, a reality on the grid as well. And so some of the articles today will talk about it. I'm just gonna start heading on into it. The, the first story is from Nikola Motors. Um, Nikola Motors CEO Trevor Milton, who by the way has been on my show twice here, announced that Nikola 2 and Nikola Trey will roll out as both hydrogen and plug-in electric. So you'll be able to order both trucks with a 500 kilowatt hour, a 750 kilowatt hour, or a one megawatt hour option in the battery electric vehicle. And the, uh, the hydrogen 2, the, the H2 vehicle, is 5,000 pounds lighter than the plug-in electric and is cheaper for the long haul applications even when we use with uh, even if you include the higher cost of hydrogen fuel the plug-in electric is for inner cities and non weight sensitive applications for the most part and nikola is not phasing out the hydrogen vehicles at all they plan to see a ratio of 50 to 1 hydrogen vehicles to electric um, in the future so people who understand the dynamics of electric transportation understand that for some applications plug-in electric works great for example, in electric trucks, the weight of 80, 000, a truck of 80,000 pounds um, uses uh, about 2.25 kilowatt hours per mile in uh, normal weather conditions, hills, and standard routes on standard days. And with the one megawatt hour battery, that gets you about 400 miles. So when you put in the hills and the other stuff, and you can only use 90% of the battery, um, and in cold weather, on steep hills, etc., you can get a little bit less range. So probably a good range is about 300 miles. So one megawatt takes 69,000 lithium cobalt batteries, they call them 21700s, weighing 68 grams each, which will get you one megawatt hour of stored energy at 10,000 pounds. So the battery in cases weigh about 10,000 pounds and the truck weighs in at 20,000 pounds. What that does is gives you about 60% of the available truck weight is available for cargo and 40% is just truck and fuel. The fuel cell truck, on the other hand, is, uh, has 80 kilograms of hydrogen. It's about seven to 10 miles per kilogram and uses the same 2.5 kilowatt hours per mile as the plug-in electric. And when you put that in the formula, the fuel cell vehicle and truck weigh about 15 to 17,000 pounds or three to 5,000 pounds less than the plug-in electric, making the available cargo load in the hydrogen truck 70% instead of 60%. So the fuel cell truck can't be beat for the long haul and the plug-in is a really good option for short haul. It's not a question of hydrogen or plug-in electric. The world really needs both and that's what uh, Nikola Motors is working on. The carbon-based fuel and the internal combustion engines are the, that are only 25% efficient are the enemy, not hydrogen versus plug-in electric. The next story is uh, Hyundai. Hyundai delivered its first Nexio in 2019. It's their second fuel cell production SUV. They delivered it in, North Amer in Northern California um, and the capital, uh, um, California at Capital Hyundai, which is the uh, dealership in San Jose. Nexio can be leased for $399 for their blue model or $449 for their limited edition model on a 36 month lease, where you can purchase it for $58,300 in California. The first year of maintenance is free uh, of charges to the customer and there's eligible tax credits um, that vary, but in the state of California, the maximum tax credit you can get based on individual circumstances is about $5,000.
So again, Nexio is more than just the cleanest, longest range, zero emission SUV on the road emitting only water. It offers a number of advanced driver assist systems as well, including forward collision avoidance assist, lane following assist, driver attention warning, and high beam assist. It also has, has remote start uh, smart parking assist, which enables Nexio to either autonomously park uh, or retrieve itself from parallel or perpendicular parking spaces without a driver in the vehicle. Additionally, Hyundai's blind spot view monitor is an industry first technology that projects the side views from Nex of Nexio from a camera um, while changing lanes or when your turn signal is on. And that camera monitors areas that cannot normally cover what a rear view or side view mirrors can cover. The next story up is uh, fuel cell vehicles to pick up the pace mid-decade, a study concludes. Now, this research report was done by Ward's Intelligence, and it says, the title of it is Fuel Cell Vehicles on the Horizon. And it reveals a number of factors driving that growth. Among them are reductions in the cost and size of fuel cell stacks, improvement in fuel cell output and durability, and the expanding fuel cell infrastructure. Fuel cell vehicles represent a tiny niche in the current global automotive market, but their mere existence today is a function of, as a functional everyday car marks a major um, uh, forward step in, in the technology. The major automakers uh, on this are on a, on a path to a wider proliferation in the coming decade, the, the report says. Awards Intelligence Survey of uh, OEMs or our manufacturers and the suppliers projection uh, and projections from data partner LMC Automotive suggest fuel cell demand in light vehicles will pick up momentum by 2025, initially finding the greatest opportunities in full-size SUVs and trucks, commercial vehicles, buses, heavy-duty trucks, and forklifts will also provide significant growth opportunities. Among the report's key findings is the current market leader in fuel cell vehicles, which is Toyota, will cede its dominance in the coming decade as Honda fuel cell portfolios. Europe will supplant Asia Pacific in the fuel cell vehicle volume by 2030, joining North America and leading the fuel cell deliveries after that. The big picture, uh, the numbers uh, still will remain tiny, um, maybe 300,000 or so annual vehicle sales per year after 2020, uh, 2030. Um, it's under 1% of the global volume, but that number represents a major increase over the small 575 vehicles sold in 2015 in the U.S. That fuel cell vehicles are on the path to wider proliferation in the 2030s and beyond is pretty well set now. A train company called Viva Rail in the U.K. has trials of a modular hydrogen train. The hydrogen train that does not produce greenhouse gas emissions is set to be tested in the U.K. by uh, Via Rail in um, coming up this year. Keep on going here. The train test, which uh, currently is in production, is due to begin operations on the company's tracks by 29, this year, in 2019, according to Alice Gilman from the company. We're expecting that by the end of the year, we'll be clocking up miles and gauging its performance, said Gilman. ViaRail spearheads uh, development of green fuel technologies in other ways. ViaRail's ongoing success and launching the new technologies in the UK market means it's the only train manufacturer with a fully approved base train to work from. The hydrogen train will follow the designs of the Transport for Wales fleet with two driving motor cars powered by uh, hop key batteries. The only difference being in the hydrogen vehicles that the, uh, instead of a diesel gen set beneath the intermediate car, hydrogen sharing will have two, hydrogen, uh, two car carriages housing the fuel cells in the hydrogen tanks. Unlike other trains, Viva Rail uh, Class 230s will store all the equipment beneath the floor, making it a much more streamlined and efficient vehicle, able to carry more passengers, deliver a faster journey time. This means that Viva Rail is not starting from scratch. Every design is already proven in the field. Works work, therefore, the research and development uh, can concentrate on optimizing designs and performance rather than working out basic uh, questions like where the fuel cells are going to be housed. Another story, revisioning the role for natural gas in a clean energy future. If the process of converting natural gas into hydrogen combined with CO2 capture and storage, the bulk of the associated emissions can be avoided. Um, still worldwide, just three plants um, can do this CO2 capture. 
Air Products, Quest, and ACTL Sturgeon. One of the plants is dedicated storage, while the other two use CO2 for enhanced oil recovery, and qual quantities are modest, but each is around one um, meg metric ton per year. Another story, Ron Motor Group uh, Incorporated has announced today that it has signed a two venture strategic partnerships in the People's Republic of China develop to develop zero emissions um, fuel cell vehicles and hydrogen infrastructure. Ron Motor Group announced today that signing of two strategic partnerships in November of 2018 is leading to a, a definitive three-way joint venture to co-develop its all-electric zero-emission hydrogen fuel cell and battery automobiles and trucks, including buses. Kevin Hong, founder and chairman of Arbor Lake Capital, the advisory group for RMG, stated that with the driving factors of the NEV national policies and industries, the fuel cell commercial vehicles in China are expected to enter the regional maturity uh, stages by 2020 to 2025 and will reach outbreak growth by 25, 25 to 2030. In terms of fuel cell passenger cars, it's expected that the market would enter the mass production stage in 2020 to 2025. The next story is hydrogen is essential for, for sustainability. And these, are, uh, these authors are from US, UC Irvine, University of California at Irvine, and the National Fuel Cell Research um, Center, including Dr. Jack um, Borwell. And the summary uh, and conclusions are, while we must electrify as many end users as possible, and we must power end users with zero emission sources like solar and wind, they need to be complemented by battery energy storage, and this strategy alone cannot achieve the sustainable and zero emissions future that we want and we need. The electrification plus battery strategy using lithium ion batteries as we are using today is limited due to the immutable features of insufficient global reserves of lithium and cobalt to produce enough batteries and storage for all the required challenges um, that we have. With self-discharge, um, that precludes seasonal storage, challenges with recycling and waste insufficient energy density of heavy duty transport, and inability to produce chemicals and fertilizers with just batteries has put hydrogen as a unique feature with zero emission fuel energy storage as a medium. The industrial and chemical feedstocks that enable the massive and seasonal energy storage that's required for zero emissions and on the electric grid to introduce zero emissions and convert uh, conversion to most sectors of the economy will be hydrogen. Intelligent Energy UAV fuel cell power module um, was selected by, by a Korean customer and it set a record breaking 10 hours plus using a uh, little multi-copter endurance flight. South Korean liquid hydrogen specialist Meta Vista has demonstrated a record breaking 10 hour and 50 minute multi-copter test flight using an intelligent energy fuel cell power module. The flight was conducted using a low bro based fuel cell en energy uh, engineering company's lightweight 650 watt fuel cell uh, power module and is believed to be the longest flight time of its kind. Meta Vista used uh, 390 grams of liquid hydrogen in a specially designed cryo container that's uh, six liters. Hey, here's uh, when Plug Power CEO plans to purchase stock in the fuel cell company. Uh, Andy Marsh was, was also a guest on my show several times, and he announced this week that um, he plans to buy up to $300,000 of shares in the fuel cells manufacturing stock uh, in the next year. On or around March 7th, Marsh will adopt a stock trading plan to buy shares of Plug's common stock, according to a company uh, blog post. The announcement is uh, keeping Marsh's premise to the share, promise to the shareholders uh, after a business update early in January. Under the proposed plan, a broker will buy up to $300,000 of shares of the company's common stock at market price with the maximum price of $10 a share between March 11th of 2019 and March 6th of 2020. The transactions will be reported to the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, just to make sure everything is above board. Now ASA enters into a contract with uh, H2 Station, which is a company, for the heavy-duty vehicles in the U.S. And we're going to hit that story right after we come back from our break.
Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Aloha, this is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in, and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there, and we have an awesome a studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at three o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. Hey, welcome back to Stan the Energy Man. On my lunch hour, as usual, Stan Osterman from the Hawaii Center for Advanced Transportation Technologies, kind of walking you through what's going on just in the last couple of weeks in the hydrogen world around the world. Um, the story I announced right before the break was uh, one on Nell Hydrogen Incorporated, which is a subsidiary of Nell ASA. Um, that is one of the oldest um, hydrogen electrolyzer manufacturers in the, on the planet. They've been making um, industrial level um, electrolyzers since the 40s. They've entered into a contract for delivery of stations made by a company called H2 Stations, solution for fueling heavy duty vehicles in the U.S. Mr. John Andre Locke, Chief Executive Officer of, the, uh, of Nell, announced that we're happy to, to secure a significant H2 station order for fueling of heavy vehicles in the U.S. as a deployment of hydrogen as a fuel cell we are also gearing up our efforts and technology developments for more towards offering solutions that can accommodate growth in this segment. The H2 station order has a total value of more than six million U.S. dollars, and the H2 station equipment will be deployed in the U.S. and will be capable of fueling both heavy-duty trucks as well as light-duty vehicles. The work related to the contract will start soon, and exact delivery times are being worked on at this, at this moment. The customer is requested to remain unnamed, and further details will be released at a later point. Next story up is a company plans to bring fuel cell technology to waterways. Um, another guest that's been on the show several times, Dr. Joseph Pratt, announced initial, that uh, initially Golden Gate Zero Emissions Marine, which is a company he started last year, will focus on the passenger vessel segment of the marine industry, along with tugboats and uh, small towboats. Pratt told the Waterways Journal this um, in a story last week. Passenger vessels and tug towboats are two maritime segments that can achieve lo lower total cost of ownership with today's technology and pricing projections, said Pratt. They're also typically operated on regional or local routes, which make them am amenable to easy and cost-effective fueling using hydrogen. For those reasons, we are focusing on these two sectors initially. But the company doesn't plan to stop there. Studies done by Sandia National Lab show that hydrogen fuel cells can power vessels from false small fishing boats up to the largest container ships, he said. Every sector can benefit from characteristics of fuel cells provided compliance with all current and future emissions regulations. Eligibility for incentives, uh, funding, lower operating costs, potentially higher revenue are all benefits of using these hydrogen technologies. Saudi Americo and Air Products plan to build Saudi Arabia's first hydrogen fueling station. The hydrogen fueling station is expected to be operational in the second quarter of 2019. It will be located within the grounds of the Air Products Technology Center in Dahrain, Techno Valley Science Park. A uh, big story here, Toyota and Panasonic EV fuel cells joined ben joint venture as a bid to get ahead of rivals. Um, it says, we will characterize our management, res or, excuse me, centralize our management resources and become the top developer and producer of electric vehicle batteries, said Panasonic manager Takeshi Hitomi 
in a January 22 press conference in the western Japan city of Nagoya. Meanwhile, Toyota will take the leading role as, a new, as the new company uh, because the battery's cost and performance has a direct influence on the competitiveness of electric hybrid vehicles. It plans to do so from 2020 in China and other places. Toyota aims to sell 5.5 million electric cars in the year 2030, a figure that will account for about half of its yearly sales. Of the projected figure, 1 million will be com a combination of EVs and fuel cell vehicles that run on electricity generated by the chemical reaction of hydrogen and oxygen. In September of 2017, Toyota established a company with Mazda Motor Company and other firms to develop basic technology for EVs, which has since been joined by companies like Subaru and Suzuki Motor Corporation. Toyota intends to supply batteries manufactured with this new company to many such firms. Mass production may help drive down the cost of batteries produced in the joint venture um, that, that are currently being supplied to Honda Motor Company, which receives its batteries now from a Panasonic and European automakers. Moreover, Toyota aims that to produce next generation batteries like solid state batteries with drastically improved performance compared to lithium ion powered cells today. Toyota pro project manager Hiro, Hiro, Hiroaki Koda said he wants to energize activities to make the next generation batteries by consolidating Toyota and Panasonic's human resources at the new company. Air Liki plans to make a strategic investment in production of carbon-free hydrogen by electrolysis. This is a pretty exciting story for me. Air Liquide announces that, that it acquired 18.6% stake in the capital of Canadian company Hydrogenics Corporation, a leader in electrolysis, hydrogen production equipment, and fuel cells. In fact, we get uh, most of our fuel cells in the vehicles we from Hydrogenics. This strategic transaction, which it represents an investment of $20 million um, and 18 million euros, enables the group to reaffirm its long-term commitment to hydrogen energy markets and its ambition to be a major player in the supplier of carbon-free hydrogen, particularly for industries uh, and mobility markets. Convinced that hydrogen will play a key role in the energy transition, Air Liquide has been a pioneer in the development of hydrogen sector for several years. Air Liquide and Hy Hydrogenics have also entered into a technology and commercial agreement to jointly develop proton exchange membrane electrolyzer technology for the rapidly growing hydrogen energy markets around the world. Comment, commenting on this investment, Francois Dar Darcias, senior president and member of the Air Liquide Group Executive Committee um, supervising innovation said, in this area, Air Liquide has the most ambitious objectives in the industry. And here's three reasons why the international cooperation is key to unlocking the hydrogen economy. And it's co-authored by a great group that started in 2017, the Hydrogen Council. They, they released this joint communique that says, technology is maturing and it's time to scale, but the key to clean hydrogen economy is greater international and multilateral cooperation. Policymakers and industry leaders must work together if we're to mitigate the effects, stop global warming. Governments have the power to set the rules and create the policy environment in which industry is empowered to accelerate hydrogen deployment, and at the same time, industry players, such as energy suppliers, utility companies, and transport manufacturers, must continue their commitment to develop and supply the technologies that will lead the world towards a cleaner future. Each has its own role to play, but public-private collaboration is the only way to turn the hydrogen economy from an idea into a real catalyst for the energy transition. Along the same notes with the Hydrogen Council, they welcome a new um, Motor Group Executive Vice Chairman, Yu Sun Chung, as this new co-chair. The Hydrogen Council released that, that um, news this past week, and um, Mr. Chung will, jo will join incumbent chair Benoit Potier, Chairman and CEO of Air Liquide, to lead the Hydrogen Council through 2019. Um, there's a story that says how Orkney leads the way in sustainable energy. This is uh, referring to the island of Orkney in uh, the UK. Orkney spokesman Mr. Watts said Orkney used to 
used to import all of its power, but it now generates, on the average, more than 120% of the electricity, um, more than 120% of uh, what it needs to run its own power. So, the, so you have all of this energy. The question is, what are you going to do with it? So Mr. Watts outlines that the three options open to islanders are to build new cables and export this um, stored energy to the mainland, use more electricity on the island itself, maybe grow, expand some of their industry, or turn the excess power into another fuel, such as hydrogen, and then store it. Finding the right course is likely to have a profound impact on Britain as the nation looks to, uh, to be the example to set, uh, looks to the example set by Orkney and embraces its low carbon future. However, they have been doing it on a shoestring, just much like Hawaii, I guess, and the message needs to be made very clear. If the UK wants to create a wave of tidal industry to make up for the wind, in wind industry that's lost 30 years ago, it needs to put its money where its mouth is and invest more heavily in the winds, turbines, and uh, hydrogen. The Leonardo DiCaprio uh, Foundation did a study, and they say that 100% renewables will save trillions of dollars. It says that hydrocarbons can be eliminated from energy sector at a quarter of the current cost of fossil fuels without using nuclear or, or CSS, says a new report. Investments in offshore wind, EV, concentrating solar, and green hydrogen must be scaled up rapidly alongside the electrification of transportation and heat, while natural gas works must eventually be converted to run on green hydrogen in order to keep global warming to well below 2 degrees centigrade, which is the goal set by the Paris Accords, according to um, authors of the report. The report's entitled Achieving the Paris Climate Agreement Goals. The report envisages that by 2050, 64 to 65% of all the power will come from variable renewables, with 27 to 29% from dispatchable renewables, namely concentrated solar, uh, bioenergy, hydropower, and geothermal. The remaining power will come from hydrogen. <clears throat> Investment in power generation until 2050 will total about $50 trillion, $30 trillion more than the than the reference scenario, which includes meeting the increased demand for electricity, for transport, heat, production of hydrogen, and other synthetic fuels. The study also envisions that 90% of the road vehicles will be powered by electricity or hydrogen by 2050, with about 60% of the buses, heavy goods vehicles will be powered by batteries, and a further 20% using fuel cells powered by hydrogen or other synthetic fuels. I personally think it's going to be the other way around. And the remaining will use synthetic biofuels or synthetic fuels, which were also needed for shipping in the aviation industry. Well, believe it or not, there's, there's probably about 30 more stories on this newsletter, and we're, we're going to cut it off there because we've hit the end of our time. I'd like to thank Keith Malone again for putting out a great newsletter, and I encourage all of you to look up the uh, California Fuel Cells Partnership online and take a look at their newsletter. And if you want to dig deeper into any of these stories or look at the 20 or so more that are out there, um, you'll get a real good picture of how far hydrogen's come this year and how fast it's going to enter your life over the next decade. And I encourage you to do so because I think awareness in uh, hydrogen technology is, uh, is an area where we all need to work on uh, getting people to understand more about this technology and what it can do to clean up our world. So that's it for Standard Energy Man this week. We'll see you next week, Friday from uh, the great, beautiful downtown offices of ThinkTech. Thanks to Cindy and Robert for doing all the magic in the control room, and we'll see you next week. Aloha.